Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. Ate for blocking my little brother after years of supporting him. I, a 26-year-old woman, have reached a breaking point with regards to my younger brother, who is 19 let's call him Paul. In 2013, my mother passed away. I was 14 at that time. My father had left my mother at the beginning of her illness, which ultimately led to her passing 18 months later. Paul and I lived with our nan and our mom, but our mom was in the hospital for most of those 18 months. Life was incredibly challenging. I felt very isolated at school. Almost no one would talk to me. My friends kept their distance as they didn't know how to approach me about my well-being or my mom's situation. It was a nightmare for me. During this difficult period, my brother, who is six to seven years younger, became my sole source of support. After our mother passed away, it felt like a more bearable situation compared to the preceding 18 months. We didn't have to concern ourselves with her well-being or worry about navigating hospital traffic. We were in a state of shock, and initially, it didn't register as a loss. It felt more like being lost in a labyrinth, and our mother had just discovered the way out. The realization didn't fully hit me until two weeks later. I had to return to school a week after her passing, and when I came home after that first day back, I was overcome with lethargy for about a month. I hardly had any appetite. I spent my time lying in bed, gazing at the ceiling. It dawned on me that one of the most important people in my life had been taken from me. My younger brother had a different reaction. Being only eight at the time, he became angry and somewhat violent, but that phase didn't last long. He was just very angry at the world, I suppose. My grandmother and I share many similarities and a touch of eccentricity. We couldn't bear the thought of continuing to live in the city where all our memories were intertwined with my mother. It was too painful to endure. So, we impulsively picked a new location on the map. The dart landed 18 hours away in what we refer to as County Bumpkin Territory. True to our word, we moved there within six months. A fresh start for this small grieving family. My grandmother became very depressed. She began abusing her painkillers from a previous spinal injury and surgery, drinking a bottle or two of cheap wine every night, and becoming abusive to my brother and me. She began hitting us but her hands got sore too quickly. So she started whacking us with coat hangers. She was also struggling with the loss of her daughter, but I couldn't let my brother be in this environment. I called my father, and he arranged to come and collect my brother. I stayed, promising to join him once I helped my nan regain herself. Something my father never let happen. They cut off contact with me for years. I tried to manage my feelings, but I became a little feral teenager because of this. Not to my nan, I always took care of my nan. But every chance I got, I sneaked out at night partying and smoking bad lettuce. I slept around with a few guys I was only 15 or 16 at this point. I met my now husband later that year. We were in year 10 together. I didn't believe boys could ever truly love girls. My father had left my mother after 18 years together. But man, did this boy show me what true love is. Let's call him Steve. Steve wasn't the brightest at school and was about to drop out. He was very smart streetwise, but when we met, he couldn't even read a clock. I fixed that. I told him that if he was serious about being with me and saw a future with me, he would have to graduate as no one wants to hire dropouts. And we did. We graduated together, and his mom and dad thanked me endlessly for helping Steve through it. We grew up a bit, and around 19, my uncle, who lived in a major city, offered to train my BF up to work for his business. We took the opportunity to move to this big city. We ended up renting a nice four-bedroom house. I moved my nan up to take care of her, she was a lot better mentally by this stage. I got a call a few months later. It was my father. He and his GF were breaking up, and he had ten days to move out. He and my brother would be homeless. I, being a lot more mature at this stage, told them I had space and they could stay until they sorted themselves out. They headed to our new city, and it took them a 12-hour drive. My brother Paul and I were strangers four years apart from each other. I didn't know how he had turned out. My father isn't the nicest or brightest of men, often racist or poo jokes came from him. But when they arrived, I felt so happy and relieved to see my brother. Taller than me now, 13, turning 14. I was 20 at this point. We had a huge dinner, and my brother was just as quick-witted and bright as I was. We woke the next morning to my father missing. He took off. He wouldn't answer his phone and simply texted back that he was done being a father 
He wanted to live, first see his own life. He had abandoned my brother. I assured Paul we would take care of him. We headed to Centrelink to try to get funding to raise him. They said my husband and I earned too much. I asked how it was relevant, he wasn't my child. He was my brother. They said either I took him on as my child or I put him in the system. Foster care. We went home, and I had a lengthy discussion with my boyfriend. He agreed we wouldn't put Paul in the system. We agreed to take him on and became his legal guardians. My brother had been out of school for six months and said he didn't want to go back. I said that if he wanted to stay, he had to complete school. Bye, I vowed to help him as I had always wanted to be a teacher. But I ended up just being a chef like my mom had been. So we did it. We raised him, and he wanted for nothing. He had Nike shoes and branded clothes, and he had the latest Xbox and PlayStation and school laptop. We wanted him to not be embarrassed with his school friends about not having a mom or a dad. My nan even apologized to him about what happened five years ago and explained her depression. They made up, and nan helped drive him to and from places when I had work. We ended up moving to the state of Queensland, where we had originally lived before our mom died. Our nan went off to live with a friend, and it was just Paul, Steve, and me in a nice four-bedroom house again. Steve and I got married, and Paul was the best man. When Paul turned 16 in nine months, he was eligible for study, which was 600 a fortnight. He finished his schooling up here and graduated. I was so proud of him. But also was so proud of myself for getting him there. We celebrated with a Gold Coast trip. So our new plan was to watch Paul go off to uni, and once complete, he was going to help us by helping us save for a house. We didn't expect this, but we appreciated that he wanted to give back for our five years of sacrifice. And then this year, 2024, he got his first proper girlfriend. He's 18 turning 19. He was due to start uni in July. The girlfriend entered the scene in Feb 2024. She moved in March, and by the end of May, everyone had issues. They ended up saying they were going to move out to her parents, which is fine. But Paul had started paying rent a year and a half back, and we had become reliant on the 300 he was paying weekly to cover backed up bills we had from loans taken out during COVID to raise him and keep us afloat. I asked him to give me a notice period, which he was fair. Four weeks to find someone to rent a room or two off me. His GF became unbearable during this time and ignored my husband and I and would leave gluten everywhere. And I'm a celiac. My brother tried to leave two weeks early, but I said that's not fair. You picked your move-out date. He ended up paying full-time but still left early. And they were meant to clean his room and their bathroom and a quick clean-over of the kitchen. But all areas were left to pigsty. My father-in-law recently had a heart attack and a stroke and has permanent brain damage. It has been very hard. I flew my husband down to see him. But my husband had to miss out on movie tickets, we had to the new Deadpool. His work friends took me instead, they were lovely. I rang my brother and told him about Steve's dad, and that I was very upset. He said he was sorry to hear that, and that he would message my husband his prayers. I was a bit rude and told him not to bother as my husband is mad at him for leaving our house a mess after everything we have done for him. He is too emotional and doesn't need Paul's message to make it worse. He understood and told me he loved me and hoped it turned out okay. Turns out my brother and his GF and all his mates went to the same cinema and the same viewing of this movie. One of his friends who I spent a lot of time helping during their high school years waved at me and smiled. My brother ignored me and turned to his GF. After the movie, I looked over at where my brother was. I hoped for a hug as I was going through a lot. But he and his GF ran out of the cinema. The friend who waved came up and asked how Steve's dad was doing and gave me a hug. This hurt even more as my own brother couldn't check on me. I messaged my brother and I said so. He came up, checked on me, and gave me a hug. He is such a lovely boy. I get no response. I wait a day and send a thumbs up. My brother's response. I don't know how to talk to you anymore. I know I am a disappointment to you and I have hurt you, but I can't handle that. I cried in my car for an hour after you told me not to message Steve about his dad. I consider him my brother. I can only say I'm sorry, and I know sorry won't make a difference. I snapped as he was speaking of only his own feelings and his own issues. I said, Okay, I hear what you are saying. So, because of how you feel and you're upset, you didn't want to say hi or check on me, I can see we aren't family anymore. Have a nice life, mate. 
I never did anything wrong by you. And I can go about happily knowing that. I blocked him. I feel like I can't take him hurting me anymore.